This is Caleb with Hackaday, and we're going to talk about how we built the Thor's Hammer project as well as the costume. Now the idea is extremely simple. A tiny Tesla coil inside a fake hammer. It should have been really quick and easy, and it kind of was initially, but so many horrible things have happened to this thing since then, I'm surprised that it functions. When I initially got the idea, I contacted Stacy Elon and asked her if she would like to help with this project by making a tiny Tesla coil that I could fit inside the head of this hammer. And she did, and it worked really well. I got it, I built the hammer, I tested it out, it was pretty cool. Then we decided to shoot a video in the same style as the overly attached spy infiltration system. You can check out that video here to see what I mean. It's a little more professional, kind of like a fake commercial. Uh, so I shipped everything out to California, I went out there and we filmed everything, uh, this alongside that video that you just saw. And I came back home, I left it all there. Uh, unfortunately, all the footage was lost. It was great too. We had child actors and everything. It was pretty funny. All the footage was lost, so I had the, the hammer shipped back to me and it was destroyed in shipping. I repaired it, modified it a little bit, and put it back together, and luckily, it still works. But it has been months and months and months, and now I'm just happy that we were able to finally share this with the public. I thought surely somebody else would do this idea before now. So I'm happy to get it out. First, let's talk a little bit about the Tesla coil. I'm not going to go in depth on how to build a Tesla coil. That's a whole big subject. And unless you're comfortable with assembling electronics, it's probably not a great beginner thing. However, if you do know what you're doing, you can get the full schematic in the description below. The Tesla coil is about this big. It sits right in the middle of the hammer with the electronics for the Tesla coil off to one side. That's why the hammer is this size. It's a little bit bigger than what you would expect uh, for Thor's hammer, but it's kind of what I needed to be able to fit everything in here and have it still work correctly. It works pretty well. Uh, I've got a ground here on the handle with a trigger that sets it off, as well as a removable battery down here that I can charge up. The Tesla coil was destroyed during shipping and I had to modify the top of it. It used to have this plate that sat on the front of it. Um, that the sparks would come off of this plate. This design, I think, actually ended up working a little bit better as it evenly distributes the arcs off of the top of it. Um, it worked out pretty well. You'll have to check out the schematic if you want more information on that. Now let's talk about how I constructed the hammer around it. The head of the hammer is made out of this foam. It's really light, really soft. I used a, a uh, electric uh, turkey cutting knife to cut it. See, it cuts it nice and easy. It gets us the shape that we want. But you'll notice that this is really soft and this is pretty rigid. So here's the process I went through to get this nice stone look uh, on this foam. I started like this and I did a solid layer basically of Elmer's glue. This is a, a shop quality or something. It's a little stronger than regular Elmer's glue, but regular Elmer's glue would work. I just painted it on with a brush and let it dry. That makes it a little more rigid. After that, a solid coat of black paint. You can see the black down in the cracks. You can just do it anywhere you see that there are indentions. Uh, I don't think I did it everywhere, but anywhere where there are indentions, you can do a coat of black, let that dry. Then after that, you take gray and paint over that, being sure to let the brush kind of skip over the low points. And that'll give you a nice stone look. Uh, that's what I did for the hammer, and I think it turned out pretty well. The handle is literally just a piece of PVC with some leather wrapped around it. I bought a few leather straps. You can see here uh, that it is shiny on one side and soft on the other side. So I literally just did one each direction, wrapped them around, put some little screws in to hold it where I needed to hold it down tight, and tied it off at the end. Painted the rest of the PVC brown, as well as the battery that slides into the battery clip at the end here. And that's pretty much it for constructing the hammer. Uh, you could create this without the electronics pretty quick and easy in an afternoon, depending on how long it took for the glue and paint to dry. You can't have Thor's hammer without having Thor's outfit. And I really didn't like what I was finding in terms of costumes for Thor. Like, the cheapest one I could find was like 50 bucks, and it was horrible looking. So, I made a quick trip to uh, a hobby store, picked up a shirt that's really tight, oh, oh, right? 
and uh, some foam, red cloth, and a little bit of silver paint. And I'm just going to make my own. Cost about 30 bucks total, and I'll bet it'll look a whole lot better than the crap I was finding online. For his interesting scaly chainmail arms, I just used silver paint and a small stamp that I made out of foam. Alright, we've got the arms done, just a little bit of paint, time to start gluing stuff on and cover up this belly. The breastplate was just this foam board that I've cut into small pieces and kind of shaped around my body. After that, I glued it into place while I'm wearing the shirt. You can see that I put foam underneath the shirt to keep from burning myself with the hot glue. And there we have it. Uh, needs a little bit of touch-up paint, but this is a fairly quick and easy one day $30, $40 Thor costume. It's a lot better than what I saw in the store, trust me. Uh, I should have thought this design do better. <laughs>